children of all ages, welcome to the Robert Sports Show. I'm your host, Robert. NXT TakeOver War Games review. Um, wasn't able to watch the show Saturday night. I ended up watching it Sunday afternoon before Survivor Series. So this is really the first shot I've had at doing a review for it. So we're going to run through this uh, card and get this up for you today. First match, we had Cash Zona versus Laura Sullivan. When Cassius Ono requested the match from William Regal for Lars Sullivan, my first instinct was, okay, Cassius Ono should win. Cassius Ono is a better wrestler. But like I said in the War Games preview, this match was more about Cassius Ono having a name. Chris Hero, Cassius Ono, whatever you want to call it. People know how good he is. He's going to put over Laura Sullivan. Is exactly what happened. Laura Sullivan is better than what he had been. All these squash matches he had. This match lasted five minutes. Um, Laura Sullivan proved a little, little, little something to me. Cash is on. No, how great he is. I gave it three star. Laura Sullivan getting the victory. Same as I said would happen in the preview. Every match outcome was what I said in my preview. Uh, Alistair Black versus Velveteen Dream is next. Alistair Black, just this Undertaker-esque facade he has, his entrance, the tattoos, just the name, Fade to Black. I mean, just the shirt, I mean, just everything about this guy is, this guy is one badass motherfucker, he's gonna kick your fucking ass. And it's just his finish with that black mask kick out of nowhere, it's like, whoa. I have hated Velveteen Dream since he debuted. Well, till now. This match showed me a little bit, showed me a lot about Velveteen Dream. Um, his kicking, his striking ability, his drop kicks. Uh, Alistair Black kicked out of the Death Valley Driver with Cartwheel finisher thing that Velveteen Dream does. So. It showed me that Velveteen Dream has some talent there. The gimmick's kind of stupid, but the raw wrestling talent that this guy has is pretty decent. He's pretty good. Uh, Alistair Black, you know, on the top 10 WWE, gets the victory. 14 minute match. I gave it four star. I thought it was worth watching. It kept me wanting to watch it. It kept me going, whoa, can Velveteen Dream win this? Oh my god. Um, but Alistair Black getting a victory. Next, we had the Fatal 4-Way for the NXT Women's title. <sighs> Ten minutes of clusteriness. When you get four competitors in a ring, you typically, like here, you kind of had two faces, two heels. You kind of had Ember Moon and Kyrie Sane as the faces. Nikki Cross, Peyton Royce as the heels. You kind of always, you had these kind of four one-on-ones. You had each of them doing their spots, each of them doing this. It gets a lot of clustery when you start having that many people in there. Um, all four of these women, don't do me wrong, deserve to be NXT Women's Champion. Nikki Cross had that last woman standing match against Asuka on NXT Weekly. was phenomenal. They had to give it four or four and a half. Uh, Peyton Royce had matches against Asuka. Her and... Um, <laughs> I keep forgetting Billy Kay's name. Go figure that one out. You know, the beautiful people, I've been calling them, uh, very talented. They're the next wave of women wrestlers in WWE. We, you know, we've had the, the Charlottes and the Becky Lynch and the Sasha Banks and the Baileys and the Oscars. The list goes on and on. These women are the next wave. In about a year or two, I think, these women will be hitting that main roster and wrestling the Alexa Blisses and the Charlottes and stuff. Uh, Kairi Sane coming, coming over from Japan, winning the Mae Young Classic this year, which was epic matches she had in there against Shayna Baszler. Ember Moon, you know, had two, four and a half, four, one was four and a quarter, one was four and a half, versus Asuka at TakeOvers this year. So deserving, so talented, should have been the one to break Asuka's record if she would never have gotten hurt. Or, or streak. So Ember Moon getting the victory here, pinning Nikki Cross, which obviously continues a few that's been there over time. You're going to have this whole influx of women wrestlers from the uh, Mae Young Classic. 
like I've said before during the Man Again Classic, what WWE needs to do is have two branches to the NXT brand. NXT, NXT Women. And I'm not saying that. I'm saying that as women as an equal, not as a lesser. So if you have a show based only on women's wrestling, you have the NXT Women's title, you have the NXT Women's tag titles, any takeover, you take, but you combine both rosters on a takeover card. They're both NXT, but you have NXT, WNXT, and you build brands with both of them, and you have your takeover card. That way you can have a show just dedicated, kind of like the Million Classic, but you have a show just dedicated to female wrestling, which right now, 2017, I personally believe we have the best female wrestling we've ever had in the pro wrestling business. Next, we have NXT Championship on the line. We had Drew McIntyre versus Andre Cien Amis. Exactly what I thought it would be. You had uh, Selena Vega getting involved. You had her getting in the ring, hitting that DDT behind the referee's back on McIntyre. You had Drew McIntyre being Drew McIntyre, you know, as talented as he is, and he was the future of the business, and he left and went to TNA and became Drew Galloway. Now he's back, but he's kind of a combination of the Drew McIntyre we knew from then, and then Drew Galloway is kind of the Drew Galloway character with the Drew McIntyre name is the way I'm seeing him. I think WWE only brought him back for the United Kingdom show and for the United Kingdom division, which would be fine. He's from Scotland. He's from Europe. I, I mean, he's not, you know, he's from that, from Europe, you know. So I know United Kingdom is his own little subcategory of Europe, but um, Andreas Young was getting the victory. There really wasn't those one spot that went, whoa, check that spot out, you know, to me. It was a great match. I gave it four and a quarter star. Uh, they both told a story. They both came out and gave their all. I think, really believe, like I said in the preview, Cian Amos was going to win. He's going to go on to take over Philadelphia, which is Royal Rumble weekend, and feud with Johnny Gargano, re rekindle a few they've had, now with a title, and then, you know, kind of transition it into Gargano and Ciampa at TakeOver New Orleans. Now on to horror games. I started watching wrestling in 95, 96. I started watching pay-per-views 97-ish. I've probably seen a handful of War Games shows back in the day by WCW. I don't recall them. I don't. I just remember two rings and a big cage and a lot of people. I haven't gone back on the network to rewatch all these yet. We had three teams. Roddy Strong teaming up with Authors of Pain versus Sanity versus The Undisputed Era. Um, basically, it's three teams of three. One man from each team starts. The other two are in a shark cage on the stage. The three star was Eric Young, representing Sanity. Adam Cole, baby, representing Undisputed Era, and Roddy Strong, representing him and Authors of Pain. If you look at the indie side of wrestling, TNA, Ring of Honor, PWG, and that kind of thing, Eric Young, TNA Original. Roddy Strong, TNA Champion, uh, X Division Champion, Ring of Honor Champion, cheater between both of them. Adam Cole, Bay Bay, Ring of Honor. Three time Ring of Honor Champion. So you had three of the guys that represented both of these companies, represented them well, now in NXT WWE. Um, so you had five minutes, and then the first shark cage opened, and two people went in. First team to go in was Undisputed Era, Bobby Fish, and Kyle O'Reilly. Five minutes later, the Authors of Pain wasn't allowed to go in. And then five minutes later, Alexander Wolf, Killian Danes of Sanity went in. And then the match truly began. Just spot after spot after power spot, you had Dane, Killian Danes doing a Michinoshu driver. Adam Cole on Bobby Fish. Carrying Adam Cole on the Bobby Fish. You had Killian Danes doing a freaking coast-to-coast -coast with a trash can on Kyle O'Reilly. 
you had a AOP boat doing a double power bomb, where basically they would be almost like the Tower of Doom, and you had each AOP member with two one member of Sandy, one member of Undisputed Era. Adam Cole was at the very top, hanging on the cage. They do these freaking double power bombs. They do. Adam Cole's a standing like, oh fuck, I'm fucked, dude, I am fucked. He climbs to the top of the cage. Well, if you escape the cage, your team's disqualified. So I'm gonna put a roof. I guess the roof is not so you can do the top spots like this. So Adam Cole's up on top of the freaking cage, you know, standing in the corner like, huh? I jump down out of the cage, I'm disqualified. If I jump in the cage, I'm gonna get my ass kicked. What do I do? What do I do? Well, Roddy Strong climbs up there and fucking does a suplex. Suplex, there's a freaking uh, suplex off top cage. Holy fuck! You're watching this fucking going, holy shit! Um, so yeah, that was just unfucking believable. And just the carnage, you know. You know, having Alexander Wolf freaking uh, German suplex, Akeem threw a fucking table. Tables got involved. That was every time the door would open, somebody bring a weapon in. It was just. It was what you thought it would be, just a carnage, just nine people beating the fuck out of each other. I was hoping for some twists and turns, you know, Dijek coming out and Roddy turning. I was kind of hoping for all that. We didn't get any of that as a straight, you know, nine guys beating the fuck out of each other. Um, Undisputed Era getting the victory, Adam Cole pinning Eric Young for the Undisputed Era winning war games. So, overall, one of the top... Uh, takeover shows ever. Um, whole weekend was great. Stay tuned to Robert Sports Show for the Survivor Series review. And uh, I think the whole weekend was great. WWE did a really good job finally of pr producing good product. I guess when they have the best of the best on both shows combined onto a show, that's what happens. But uh, well, that'll wrap up the WWE NXT Takeover War Games review. As always, thanks for watching Robert Sports Show. I don't just have a great day. Have a spiffy day. Robert Sports Show, your YouTube leader in sports channel content.